All right, welcome back. It is 7 November. Uh, yeah, let's look at the markets today. What do we got going on? We have things still going up. Trump election news is good news. Uh, markets reacted great. Uh, Bitcoin crypto loves the Trump win. Look at this, guys. 76254 It's incredible. Bitcoin miner. I have this. I sold it, but it's up hugely. Uh, that's a derivative of Bitcoin. It's a Bitcoin miner. It doesn't really follow Bitcoin, but again, it's doing well. Uh, other ones I have are Misty, which is a MicroStrategy call option through Yieldmax. This is doing really good. It pays a massive dividend. I like holding stocks that pay me monthly to hold them, if not weekly. Yieldmax have some, some funds like YMAG right here and YMAX. They pay out a weekly, roughly about 20 cents per share, which is not bad. It's a good way. Um, why Max, I think, is more conservative? Yeah, because it covers all the funds in the Yield Max family. Why Mag is more of the uh, Magnificent Seven stocks like Tesla and Ad and NVIDIA. Maybe not bad now with the Trump win. The stock market does love the Trump win. On the night, I discovered all, polling mar all pollings are off. They're biased or skewed. Uh, for obvious reasons, they want to influence the election. Uh, they're a bunch of, bunch of old timers who think they know what the sentiment of the country is and they don't get it and they uh they don't realize that people on the right the conservatives the normal people of the world do not answer polls they don't want to be bothered the left will just bullshit and say yeah yeah go 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 you know they don't get it the polls are useless what does matter is the betting market poly market was the for the win they called it they were spot on it looked like people were manipulating the market on the kalishi one and the other one by dumping money on the other side like uh just to skew the betting polls they're throwing money away. It might have been um, campaign money, which makes you wonder too. They're just trying to influence the betting market uh, like some of the whales do on Bitcoin in your days. They would influence the price of Bitcoin by just buying or selling huge swaths of Bitcoin. Same with the betting market. But in the end, the poly market was spot on. And also what I watched that night, election night, was the um, price of Bitcoin. It started to go up. And when you had New York Times, the New York Times left, left, left disgusting progressive left rag and they were just their little needle they have a great graphic so i'll give the tech guys at new york times they have a good team they got to keep that tech team you know because their graphics and their needle and all this stuff it started to skew heavy for trump and then bitcoin just started to go up 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 good news for everybody so anyway here we are and today i wanted to show you um what i'm kind of doing i played around with uh, x a bit twitter x i love twitter x now must did a great job he should get the medal of freedom for keeping free speech out there and you can use it uh i was playing around i was just going how can i use this can i use it to get some financial information do my research and stuff the answer is yes brock is a lot a hundred thousand percent better than chat gpt i've used both x i pay the for the premium package with a couple bucks a month you get verified as an account and then you can go into Grok, generate images, do questions. It'll go out and find all recent data on the internet, in Twitter as well, and X from all accounts, from all PDFs. It just gathers a lot more recent information over crappy ChatGPT. ChatGPT is run by Google. They are known by us and almost election interference company. Uh, yeah, you got to watch them. I don't, and they always say we're two years old. We can't get the current data. And even if you pay 20 bucks a month, it's just a piece of crap. It's not worth it. Grok is 100% better from my experience. So I decided to go in today and say, I'm looking at these, these uh, yield max ETFs again. I like Misty. I'm in that big because the dividend's huge and it's actually up. Net asset value has increased. So be careful what you listen to on YouTube. People don't know what the heck they're talking about. You can listen like my crap and then make your own decision. So then I've been listening to people and I said, this is crap. I'm going to go and pull and aggregate all the information I can using Grok. So you go to Grok right here, right? I'm on my X account. And I just said, for the Yomax ETF funds, this is the prompt. Should I invest in the YMAG or the YMAX ETF? So having used the crappy chat GPT from the lefty-leaning Google, uh, don't use it. Don't use chat GPT. For, you're just going to get biased, horrible information. And they won't even give you any financial research information. Uh, they're useless. And, uh, and if, if anything, they'll give you biased information that is just going to confuse you. Using Grok, I just did the prompt and it said, uh, here's the answer. Let's just go through it. This is a lot detailed, a lot of detailed information I never received, even on my own, just Googling. Ugh, I'm sick of Googling's now almost become antiquated. 
when people say go Google it, it's like, no, I don't want to. I'll just go use Grok, man. It'll help me aggregate all the information a lot faster and give it a nice summary and a nice uh, conclusion, uh, strategies, risk, uh, volatility. It, it'll do that for you, which would take you hours and you may miss data. So summary of that is Grok for the win. Let's go through it. When deciding between the Yomax Magnificent 7 Fund Option Income ETFs YMAG and the Yomax Universal Fund Option ETF YMAX, here are other considerations. You look at your investment strategy. As I mentioned, Yomax focuses on the Magnificent 7 companies. Yomax uh, is a broader fund that includes a Yomax ETFs. It provides a more diversified approach across different sectors and companies. It's a less risky due to diversification. So these have been paying about from 15 to 22 cents per share each week. This is a weekly payout. Uh, yeah, if you want to get income weekly. Uh, most other ones are monthly in the uh, Yomax funds. So you pick your boys and I don't care. I'm used to getting paid on a monthly basis, so I don't really care. But uh, I like this, that these are just kind of in the, in the uh, like the YMAG. Does the uh, Alphabet, Meta, Microsoft, NVIDIA, Tesla. Uh, now with the election win and the stock market loving the, who the winner, Trump, the markets are going to do well. And uh, the, the techs may do well again. So it may be smart to jump into the YMAG. And that's why I did this prompt. So you can go through the performance and risk. Uh, YMAG has been noted for higher distribution rates right here. Uh, it might attract you, blah, 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 but the high yields can come with a high volatility. That's the problem, high yields, high volatility, and mainly because it's concentrated on the tech stocks. Those are really like NVIDIA's high and all this stuff. Yeah, I don't know. So that's a good, I like that prompt or that answer, and then YMAX provides a slower, slow, slightly lower distribution rate and uh, it spreads its risk across more assets. So last month, y, last week, YMAX came in at 22 cents per share. This week it came in a half that 11 cents. Uh, YMAG is at 21, 22 cents this week. So we'll see. It might go up again. Who knows? I'm thinking about getting some YMAG. I put more in the Misty. But uh, I like that this Grok is out there. It gives you information that you can sit back and digest and go, well, I'm, I'm telling you, actually, I feel better looking at this. It helps me make a more informed decision before I click buy, sell, or whatever. So I'm just putting it out there. Go check out Grok. Now, I financial advice. Don't be a fool. If you're listening to anyone on YouTube about financial stuff, you're going to lose all your money. <laughs> or the government's going to take it all until we get in office and start cleaning up the taxation crap out there. Um, let's go. Yeah, diversification. Recent changes in sentiments. Yeah, they shifted to a, why both of them have, why Max, why Mag? have shifted to a weekly distribution from monthly, and that's attractive to some people. I don't really care. You know, you're gonna get your money against your money. If you need it that bad, then you have another problem. But uh, monthly's fine for me. You got expense ratios. They take their cut, which is fine. They're making you a lot of money. They deserve their cut. They're working for you with these uh, call options and stuff like that. I don't understand any of that crap. That's why I let them get paid with the fees and their expenses just so they can make me money. Post on X. See, I like this. Investor sentiment. Post on X show interest in both ETFs for passive income with a notable mention that YMAG might be the one, uh, one of the more stable options within the uh, YMAG suite due to its focus on large cap tech. True. I'm starting to think that now. But you never know. I think both YMAG and YMAX may be equal. So it's, this is going to help me think about it for a little bit. And here we go. Conclusion. This is gold, man. This is from Grok. How, how long would this take you to figure this out, if at all? Probably, I'd say not. You wouldn't be able to get this information. Not even from ChatGPT. So you want to choose YMAG if you believe in the continued growth of the MAG7 tech stocks. And if you're comfortable with a uh, higher volatility. If you have time, man, volatility is your friend sometimes. Especially with these call and put options. Volatility is, is, makes you more money, I think. Based on what I've been reading with these YOMAX funds. Let's see. Choose YMAX if you prefer to diversify approach to mitigate risk. All right. And then if you're looking at exposure, a wider range of sectors, got it. And then you look here, they give you their disclaimer as well. You took a future performance. Uh, there's always high risk in anything. I mean, you can not wake up the next day. That's a high risk. Going to bed is a high risk. So you got to, who cares? Pick your poison, right? Uh, and there we go. I just wanted to point out that I just stumbled across this. I said, ChatGPT kind of 
jaded me because they would never answer anything in this detail, right? On financial stuff. They're, they're chicken. There's this more focus on crap. And their data is old, apparently. They say, this is a two-year-old data we're playing with. Well, I'm going to go with a winner. I'm going with Musk, who's a winner. I'm going with X. It's a winner. So Google's on its way out. They're going to get broken up. They're going to get in trouble for election interference. They're, they're not going to be around. They're going to be like AT&T was, broken up the multiple little companies. So stick with the winner. Check out Grok. Pay for the premium. Uh, I'm not getting premium plus because I don't want to go broke. You got to watch memberships and subscriptions. Do not get in too many if at all, even if you have uh, streaming services, I don't know, find the best one, if any, cut them, because you don't need to spend all that money. It all adds up. Take your monthly bills on all your subscriptions, even your phone and all that crap, and times it times 12, and you'll go, oh my God, that's a lot of money. Yeah, you're, you're spending almost 2,500 bucks a year on your phone. It's, or, you know, it depends on what plan you got, but dear God, and you got all these subscription services. I looked at YouTube TV, 80 bucks a month, and on top of that, for any sports, it's a couple hundred bucks to buy in. Holy crap. Forget it. Anyway, that's all I got. Let me know what you think. Uh, I just want to throw that out there. Go forward, do great things. See you later.